good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to City Hall for tonight's regularly scheduled City Council meeting. This meeting is called to order. I kindly ask our City Clerk to please take the roll call. Mike Bruno. Here. Tara Burkhardt. Here. Don Cummings. Here. Becky Ruby. Here. Dean Kilberg is out. Craig Maladra. Here. Richard Marks is out. Gene McGowan. Here. Jim Redecky. Here. Robert Swanson. Here. Uh, ladies and just to explain briefly why a couple of council members are absent, uh, Mr. Kilberg has been called out of state for business purposes and uh, a joyous occasion with respect to Alderman Marks. Uh, his son returns from Afghanistan and Alderman Marks is flying to New York to greet him, which is obviously appropriate, so very nice. We always begin our city council meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance. And while I very much wanted a certain young lady to lead us in the pledge, she begged me not to invite her to do so, but instead nominated a good friend of hers. So I'd like to invite Grace Loberg. Grace, if you could lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If, for those of you who do not know, now Grace, why don't you introduce us to you and everyone tuning in to you as well? Um, do I talk into this? <laughs> okay, I'm... On the microphone, Grace, okay. that's why you... <laughs> Hello, I am Grace Loberg. I graduated from Geneva last year, and I go to the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Now, Grace was a member of last year's state championship basketball team. Also, as you may be able to tell, a standout volleyball player, full-ride scholarship athlete at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in volleyball. She's only home for a week, and then she returns to Madison for training camps. Correct. So we're very proud of you. We're delighted you're with us tonight. Do you need props or anything? You, you know the words? I do. Everybody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well done, Ms. Loberg. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Whitley, if I could invite you at the podium, or to the podium, rather. Ms. Loberg's here to celebrate her friend, Margaret Whitley's appearance tonight, and I, I've seen all sorts of folks here to help celebrate, oh. which is pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. You were with us just a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm, yes. Anything changed since then you want to share? Or? No. <laughs> <laughs> now, Margaret, off to the University of Alabama, Birmingham to play basketball. Yes. And, of course, study. Um, I was undecided, but most likely business. Awesome. Yeah. Now, according to this cheat sheet I have, based on media that you've garnered over the years, you have competed in the three-point contest every year. Yes. Freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year. Mm-hmm. Correct. I believe you're quoted as saying it's not your favorite shot to take, but you like taking them. Is that a fair statement? Very fair, yeah. <laughs> Why is that? Mm. Uh, it's a good opportunity, I think, to do something different. And the three-point contest is something kind of just fun. Oh, it is fun. And um, break something. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's just it kind of was good, especially during postseason, kind of to let off nerves before the game because it? Okay. it would always happen before, um, like the championship games. So now, I think we I have a cool good. picture of you. Oh. If Mr. Collins wants to bring that up, if he can bring that up. And I'm not certain this is after your three-point. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's after the game, I suppose. That was, yeah, that was after the game. That's all. But still, so you got a separate medal for the three-point championship, too. Uh, it was like a ball or like a yeah, plaque. Oh, is that at the press yeah. conference, that ball that yeah. was next to you? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow, the IHSA has lots of money, don't they? <laughs> nice ball. <laughs> Explain to those who perhaps are not aware, what is the distance from the third or three-point arc in girls basketball to the bucket? Oh. Mr. I, Whitley. Do I'm you not sure about that one. <laughs> 19, what is it? 199. 19, 9. 19, 9. Yep. 19, 9. <laughs> <laughs> Almost twice the distance from the what? 
free throw line. Free throw line. <laughs> free throw line. Your don't parents really must like be so numbers. proud of you this evening. <laughs> <laughs> now you have some guests with you this evening. You want to introduce all those special guests? Well, you got your family. You've got a yeah. sister who's going to be married in a month. Yeah, that's my sister Kelly. She went to. She ran. She won a state championship for cross country. Yes, she did. My mom, Cynthia, and my dad, Jim. That's it. That's her. For my family. That's good. Yeah. Did you participate in the three-point contest? Because, sure, I'll do it. Did you have any inclination that you know what? This is the year I'm going to win this thing. No. Only because I try not to put a lot of pressure on myself to do it. I kind of just did it, again, like for fun. And before, like, those big games, it was kind of just a fun thing to do. Especially when, um, like, me and Stephanie did it together. And then when we both got to state, that was just kind of something cool that we shared. So it was more of something I did. Just obviously, like, I wanted to try to do well in it. But I never was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to win this. And I was, wasn't really, like, set on doing it. I just kind of did it for fun. Now, according to this, you made 11 of 15 three-pointers to advance to the final four of the contest. Mm -hmm. They call you clutch in this article. Are you clutch? <laughs> uh, give or take. Yeah. Depends. Give or take. <laughs> Whitley made six of her last seven shots to go eight for 15 to get into a shoot-off with a young lady from Dunlap High School. <clears throat> Do you remember when you won it? Do you remember when the... Bucket went in, and you thought, that's it, I got this, baby. Yeah, well, not when I shot, but I knew, because I the girl shot after me, so if she either beat mine or she tied it or, you know, got less, then I knew. So when she was on, like, the last, like, two shots, it was either, if she made the shot, she would have won it, and she missed, she missed both of them. I know, I kind of felt bad. But you're friends with her. You oh. guys compete at that level, you're friends with everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah so, where is she going to school, do you know? The other girl? Yeah, the, your friend. Oh, yeah. no, uh, she was, it was a 1A school. I wasn't sure what it was called. It was like black and gray and white. Got it, got it. You're the last of the Whitleys. Mm-hmm, yes. So you saw your sisters play. Yes. And I can remember when I used to do the announcing for the game, you used to kind of hang out at the court and run around and all other stuff. Yeah. So now it's, <laughs> it's, the Whitleys are no more with respect to playing basketball at Geneva High School. Correct. How's that feel? It's a it's a happy and sad feeling. Yeah, I bet. think, kind of. It was it definitely a good ending, I guess, to all of it. But um, Shady, sad, huh? yeah. yeah. <laughs> but sad that I mean, it's all over. But. And I understand you're shipping out to Birmingham on June the fourth. Yes. And early because you'll be obviously training. Mm -hmm. Training in summer school. Wow. When does the season begin? Um, I think like official practices begin in like October, November area. Okay. Yes. So you'll be training and practicing just with friends and other players, but no coaches and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Kind of like IHSA rules. Yeah. Wow. Graduation happens in just a few days. Yes. Sunday. Right. <laughs> yeah. Th thank you. <laughs> Are you speaking at graduation? No, I'm not. I, Mr. Rogers said you were. No. <laughs> no. I don't think I am. <laughs> Was I supposed to? And how many kids graduate this year? Or excuse me, students. Do you know? Uh, 501. 501? Yes. Now, are you the 501st because you're a W? <laughs> Probably right there. I'm really close. So, so if we're bored or we leave, no offense taken. <laughs> no. So, it's a long Anybody wait. after Whitley? Do you know? I think so. Is that? Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Mom and Dad, this has to be a bittersweet moment. It is. Yeah. It's incredible. You know, it yeah, indeed. This year and last year, your mom is quoted as saying, I thought I was going to have a heart attack. <laughs> it wasn't scary at the end. It was scary, wasn't it? Yeah. Two years in a row scary. That's How do you maintain sure. your composure? Uh, over time, I think. It was kind of something that was always like in feeder basketball going up to high school was something like our coach always said was you have to keep your composure, you have to keep your composure. And, and so I think coach that's Meadows is here tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. It's something developed like as a freshman, especially like being young and then moving upwards and then becoming that leader. It's something you kind of have to grow into. Are you superstitious? Yes. So would you be comfortable sharing with us your 
My superstitions? Your superstition prior to the game and what you do prior to the game? Yes. Uh, I have to have my nails painted black and they can't be chipped anywhere, so I'll bring the nail polish with me and I'll like do it in the bus or sitting in the locker room. I, the game before junior year, me and Bree Borkowitz, my teammate, number 22, we watched like inspirational videos before the game. When the whole team went out and watched like the other one, we couldn't, we just didn't want to go out there, so we watched them. And then this year we did it again. And- Well now, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. That begs the question, what sort of inspirational videos? The miracle speech. Oh. And the speech at the end of Glory Road, when he gives to the... At the end of Glory Road? Glory Road. Oh, Glory Road. Yeah. <laughs> the basketball one. Which one do you like better? Glory Road. Glory Road? Mm -hmm. Now, in years to come, which could be actually weeks to come, you're going to be asked to speak to young ladies mm -hmm. and young men who play sports. And mm -hmm. they're going to look to you and say, how did you do it, Whit? What motivated you? How can you motivate us? What would you say? To motivate them? I would tell them to, first of all, enjoy it. Because if you take it too seriously, you usually aren't as successful as you want to be. To enjoy it, enjoy the people around you, and to work hard. And if you work hard, it truly can set you apart from all those people that are maybe better than you. So the old adage, while they may be better, no one will work as hard as I do. Exactly. And that shows on the court, of course. That shows exactly. off the court with mm -hmm. respect to your academics. So. All the extra hours you put in other, for people. Wow. Was there ever a time where you thought, man, this is too much? No. No? That's good. No, it was always fun. Always fun. Yeah. And your biggest fans, mom and dad and sisters? Yeah, family. Was there always Meadows, a, too. And Meadows, was there always... You don't have to play for it anymore, don't worry. <laughs> was, there, was there always a phone call after a game? If there was, who did you call? Well, that's hard. Usually either my, my dad or Taylor. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Any questions or comments from the dais? Thank you. Oh, we're not finished. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to invite your family up? <laughs> Apparently not. Let's <laughs> get this out of the way. So many questions. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, several weeks ago, the entire team was here to celebrate their state championship. And at that point, we knew we wanted to recognize Margaret separately for her championship in the three point contest. Kindly, I reached out to Mr. Whitley and explained the process, and he said, of course, we're going to be there. So we're delighted you're here. Thank you. So if you would like to unveil a special gift. This was actually paid for by Montini. <laughs> 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 we 
at least, thank you very much. Thank you. And I know you need to sneak out. Margaret, safe travels to school. I've asked Margaret to DM me with respect to where she wants the sign. It has to be in the city of Geneva limits, just so you know. So, can't be in Birmingham. So. Grace, thanks again. Item 3B, ladies and gentlemen, is the 2018 Historic Preservation Award presentation. We have our City of Geneva Historic Preservation Planner, Mr. Michael Lambert, here to present information and set awards. Mr. Lambert, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, uh, Council Members. Good to be back in front of you again. Um, it's been quite frequent lately. For the past 14 years or more, the City of Geneva has presented the Preservation Awards every two years to the owners of properties that have, pre that have been preserved, rehabilitated, and maintained in accordance with the Secretary of the Interior's Standards for Rehabilitation. And since 2010, also in accordance with the City of Geneva's adopted window and siding rehabilitation policies. The biennial award, awards are presented in um, I'm sorry, the biannual award presentation is held in May in conjunction with National Preservation Month, which is celebrated across the country in big cities, small towns, and rural crossroads. The theme for this year's National Preservation Month is This Place Matters. Since the last presentation of these awards, the Historic Preservation Commission has reviewed more than 100 cases, which does not count the nearly 200 additional applications that have been reviewed administratively. Furthermore, the Commission monitors dozens of projects that have been approved in the past but are being completed over time by dedicated property owners. Tonight, three projects were selected for recognition by the Commission. These three projects represent the thoughtful approach of applying the nationally accepted standards for rehabilitation at the local level. These projects represent compromise and creativity, purpose and perseverance. The three projects share the common goal of maintaining the historic architectural character of the Geneva Historic District. Alongside their neighbors, these honored properties represent the preservation spirit in Geneva that these places matter. The first recipient is the Mark, the Mark and Katie Francis home at 22 Campbell Street. I first met Katie shortly after she and her husband Mark purchased the house at 22 Campbell Street. Following up on a building inspection report, Katie contacted me with questions about how to determine the structural integrity of a roof that was built with sapling trees, a roof that was showing signs of severe structural distress. Based on some research, it appears that the house was one of the first to have been relocated by Kate Raftery, founder of The Little Traveler. She relocated the cottage as part of her River Lane beautification project. Beginning about 1925 or 1926, Kate and her husband Edmund began acquiring dilapidated pioneer shanties near the west bank of the Fox River, some which dated to the 1840s and early 1850s. Kate Raftery's vision was intended to create cottage studios where artisans could live and produce their artwork. The home at 22 Campbell Street was moved to its present site and was one of the first to be renovated as part of Raftery's River Lane beautification. Likely, the architectural plans were drawn by their son, Howard, before he had graduated from college and before he began working for local architect, Walter Frazier. The small home sits on a challenging and small hillside lot. The original section of the house is more than 160 years old and has been enlarged and remodeled several times since the mid-1920s. Sanborn Fire Insurance Company maps indicated that a front porch had existed at one time, but had been removed after 1945. As it turned out, the sapling tree roof had been reconstructed almost a century ago, and the remaining sapling tree rafters were no longer functional. Beginning in 2016, Mark and Katie undertook an ambitious remodeling plan that included the reconfiguration of many interior spaces, the reconstruction of the roof, restoration of historic windows and exterior siding, and the reconstruction of the front porch. Considering the SOI standards for rehabilitation, the Historic Preservation Commission reviewed several options as proposed by architect Sean Gallagher to minimally alter the original roof line while accommodating the many interior changes. 
Ultimately, a new gable set back from the front wall of the house was approved with vertical siding to differentiate it from the siding of the original home. Historic siding was salvaged from the sides of the home and used to patch the front facade. As completed, the front features historic materials while the sides, which are less visible to the street, incorporate fiber cement siding that replaces the original siding. Construction work was completed in late 2017 by Wetmore Construction. Tonight, Mark and Katie Francis are recognized for excellence in exterior rehabilitation for their home at 22 Campbell Street because this place matters. The next recipient is the Paul and Donna Fenske home at 401 Ford Street. What began as a simple insurance claim to replace damaged vinyl siding changed into an unintended preservation project. When the vinyl siding was removed, the evolution of the building was exposed. Lath was exposed unexpectedly, suggesting the house at one time had been covered with stucco. Beneath the lath, the original wood siding appeared to exist in good condition. Originally located on the outskirts of town, the two-story house was built in 1866 for original owners George S. and Irene Barr, as you can see in the upper left-hand picture. Around 1923, the house was remodeled by Nels and Ida Swanson, who had a clabbered addition to the west side of the house. Shortly afterwards, the Swansons installed stucco over the original clabbered <laughs> exterior. By 1930, a new two-story porch constructed with only stucco and no clabbered was added to the front of the home by the Swansons. A substantial remodeling was completed between 1968 and 1971. At that time, the lower level of the front porch was enclosed and the stucco was removed from the entire exterior of the home, but the lath was left in place. When the project was bought, brought before the Historic Preservation Commission, the applicant, commissioners, and staff struggled with how to best apply the SOI standards and the Geneva siding policy to a home that had undergone so many changes over time, where no stucco remained and no single period of the home's evolution was wholly intact. However, everyone did agree that the stucco should not be reinstalled. At the request of the commission, numerous bids were received for the rehabilitation of the exterior. Options ranged from restoration of the original siding at the main body of the house and installation of fiber siding at the front porch to the removal of all the original siding and replacement with completely new fiber cement siding. Ultimately, the combination of the repair and restoration of the 1866 era siding and the installation of new fiber cement siding at the later front porch proved to be the most cost-effective approach uh, for everyone. Because Geneva's Historic Preservation Ordinance and Siding Policy cited the SOI standards and disallows the installation of new vinyl siding within the historic district, the insurance company, after numerous inquiries and discussions with me, completed the exterior rehabilitation per the Historic Preservation Commission's rec requirements without additional expense to the homeowner based on provisions within their insurance policy. Construction work was completed in 2017 by Safeguard Construction. Tonight, Paul and Donna Fenske are recognized for excellence in exterior rehabilitation of their home at 401 Street, Ford Street because this place truly matters. And the final recipients this evening are Chris and Brennan Anderson for their home at 328 North 2nd Street. The rehabilitation of 328 North 2nd Street predates my arrival at the city of Geneva. The original scope of the project included rehabilitation of the exterior and the construction of a sizable addition to the rear of the home. The Anderson House sits on a prominent location at the corner of 2nd and Stevens Streets and has a large side yard to the south. Because every side of this home is visible from the public right-of-way, the Historic Preservation Commission reviewed all elevations of the project as it was proposed to be completed. After several reviews between the property owners, their architect Sean Gallagher, and the Historic Preservation Commission, the exterior rehabilitation of the Anderson's home began in earnest in 2011. <coughs> The majority of the exterior rehabilitation work has been completed by Chris Anderson over the last eight years, working on his family's home at night, on weekends, and during his vacation time. Chris has restored the original windows in the home, scraped the paint from the exterior walls, repaired the historic siding, and repainted the home. Additionally, portions, portions of the original front porch were reconstructed to match historic details. This exterior work was also completed in 2017. So tonight, Chris and Brian Anderson are also recognized for both their personal dedication as well as their sensitive exterior rehabilitation of their home at 328 North 2nd Street because this place matters. 
So at this time, I would ask Mayor Burns if he'd like to come forward and present certificates to the owners of the honored properties. Are all the, uh, are all, I know the Andersons are here. I know the Fenskys are here. I got to ask Mr. Anderson. Dude, you did all this yourself? I had a lot of help. I had a lot of help. Hmm. Michael, you want to help me out? Anything else, Mr. Lambert? Nope. Ladies and gentlemen, our next item of business is item 3C, the Geneva Chamber of Commerce annual report and presentation. We have several of the esteemed members of the chamber board, none more esteemed than Ms. Gaines, who is with us this evening. Good afternoon. It's good, good evening, afternoon. isn't it? Good evening, yes. Uh, this is our annual report. We come every year. We try and impress you, amaze you. Uh, this year, we've asked for a few of our friends to help us. So if you give us a minute to get uh, under control, we'll do that. And Scott Lieben, chairman of the board, will be the first speaker. Just give us a minute. Is there a costume change here? Or? Yes. Is that what it is? <laughs> sure, give it a shot. Yeah, we're not waiting for Santa tonight, though, right? It's a great night of presentations, isn't it? It is. After a nice rainy day. Uh, well, I was excited to come and talk a little bit about the last year and what we've done with marketing and bringing people into Geneva. And there are always some questions that arise, and we tried to clarify them tonight for you. The advertising that we do on the money we have allocated 
really benefits every business in Geneva, whether they're members of the chamber or not. We advertise Geneva as a shopping, dining, lodging district that brings people all over. But the festival events bring visitors to everyone's door, and many will remain throughout the year. Our website has received over a million visits, and we know that more during the festivals than any other month in terms of the number of hits we get. And this shows the level of interest in the events that we have going on in town. We have each year in this presentation tried to illuminate the impact of these events for this council. Knowing how reserved our mayor is, we certainly want to keep everything very conservative and relaxed and easy tonight. But we have the same problem that a great classic movie in 1947 had, The Miracle on 34th Street. In that movie, Judge Harper was asked to rule on whether Santa Claus existed or not. He was in a political quandary because, even more so than this dais sometimes has to deal with, because his grandchildren and his children and his wife and all those people of the city of New York were angry with him, and his closest family members wouldn't even talk to him. The defense attorney rose to make a final plea. There was a commotion in the hall. There was a commotion in the hall. There was a loud commotion in the hall. Sound, sound. Oh, look. Oh, you know how hard it is to direct a movie? <laughs> there was a commotion in the hall. Someone ran in and whispered in his ear. Someone ran in and whispered in his ear. Now? Ah, Mr. Mayor. He turned to the judge and said, I have the proof you need of the impact of these festivals and the impact on the city of Geneva, the businesses and the people. I have the proof here. Here in the same way in the night, I'm telling you like in Miracle on 34th Street, would you like to see the proof? Uh, Mr. Lieben, I've enjoyed your comments up until now. Um, <laughs> Proof is critical, so I would ask kindly on behalf of the council and those tuning in, proof is essential, so please, if you've got proof, please deliver said proof. Oh, you really want to see the proof? Mr. Levin, proof is important. Like in the movie, do you want it right there on your I dais? I want it on the dais. I don't, you know, the city attorney, our city clerk, does not mind. If proof is to be delivered, deliver it now, please. You are sure you want it on the dais? I've never been sure of anything in my life. <laughs> would you bring in the proof, please? Bring in the proof. With energy, running in. Come on, let's get a little movement here. Come in, come in, come in faster. Let's go, we gotta go out and get more. Well then. You gotta get more? Keep going fast, let's get it done. Pile it up. Way to go, Simon. I trust, you, I, I, I trust you have dental floss? <laughs> oh, sorry. That's awesome. Don't worry, wow. You could just turn the mic off. <laughs> I heard that, Radecki. <laughs> you get that nice aroma there? Yeah. I was not going to do it to you. I thought he asked for it. There's no sense of... <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Now the judge put his head, all this mail from the post office was delivered on his dais. Mr. Mayor, he stuck his head, that's it, he popped up over the mail. Yeah, still here. Because he was saved, because he knew if the United States Post Office proved that this man sitting here was the real and only Santa Claus, he could justify it. I want you to know that each one of these 100 bags of popcorn represents each of the people that popped into Geneva, each kernel represents the people that popped into Geneva in 2017. Is that enough proof for you? Well, I'm afraid to hear the answer. <laughs> As you, this is, is it enough proof for the council? I'll defer. Okay. <laughs> proof is proof. Well done. All right. By the way, I'm the butter. <laughs> this is non-buttered popcorn. Oh, <laughs> 
when people come to enjoy an event, and we're trying to have some fun too, because really that's what it means to come to Geneva. They notice all the other services that we have and the shops and the flowers around the community and so forth. And our business has given us a first-hand account that these people that pop in do have that attitude toward Geneva and being here for festivals, but also coming back to eat and to shop and to participate in this community. So would we like to start just removing some of that from the front <laughs> now so while we uh, proceed ahead? We've presented you, uh, this, is, this is not totally edible, but the stuff that we left for you, you can eat. So. <laughs> Actually, not edible. We left you some edible. They were all popped, though it took them 15 hours to pop all the popcorn. So, wow. Susan Hong, a member of the Chamber of Board and Fox Val owner of Fox Valley, Va Valley Values, will show you some of our efforts on the slides. Susan? Good evening, everyone. Hi, Susan. Hello. So the 440,000 colonels that you see here before you today represent those people who popped into Geneva during just our festival time in the last year. Many of you may know that our small businesses don't have large budgets to spend on their own advertising. So the advertising that the Chamber of Commerce does is really essential to helping them succeed and grow. So you might ask, how do we do that? How do we help not only the town, but all the small businesses in town? So there are three main things that we'd like to share with you today, that we, or tonight, that we do. The first one is our visitor's guide. We create and print 50,000 Geneva visitor's guides every year and distribute them in many, many different places, including the Illinois Office of Tourism, which is in Chicago, as well as in Springfield, the state of Illinois, State of Illinois Department of Tourism. We also put these in select visitor centers uh, or welcome centers um, throughout town, including hotels, motels, as well as inns. We distribute many of these at festivals as people come to our town to learn about what's going on and where to shop and dine. We also have tour brokers and all the business owners in the community are welcome to have these visitor's guides and most of our chamber members do provide these to consumers that are in their shops and restaurants, whether they're downtown or out on the Randall Road corridor. So the visitor's guide creates one way that we drive more traffic back into town and tell them what's going on in town. The second thing that we do is advertise and you've seen these ads, we've seen all kinds of ads in newspapers and magazines, but we also do a lot of digital email marketing image mobile marketing, pop-ups on, um, on internet websites, as well as radio and TV. The third thing that we do to help advertise is purely the festivals. We're driving a lot of people to town and we're telling them about the next festival that comes in the line of festivals we have every year. For your information, at Swedish Days, we drive, uh, we have attendees of about 200,000 attendees at the uh, Swedish Day festivals every year. The Festival of the Vine, we have 25,000. The, uh, excuse me, the Art Fair. Festival of the Vine is 75,000 people. Christmas Walk is about 20,000. And we also, of course, have the Christmas Tour, which sold out, or the Holiday Tour, which sold out. I actually was in the um, Visitor Center all day on Friday of the Christmas Walk this past year and saw and, and greeted people from all over the place. Bensonville, Arlington Heights, Darwin's Grove had somebody came from Arizona, uh, Rockford, all over the place. They're coming into town. Now, many of these festivals, as you know, are award winning. And you can see uh, in your packet, we had a listing of some of the, the awards that the festivals have won in the, in, through the West, uh, West Suburban Living, as well as the Daily Herald and the King County Chronicle. 
when consumers are asked to vote on their best festival, Swedish Day always comes up. Hand, you know, year after year after year, and that was no exception this past year. When asked about art shows, their favorite art shows, the Geneva Art Show wins that award. When just asked, where's the best place to live in the Tri-Cities, Geneva comes up as the winner. So we're driving award-winning festivals throughout the year as well. Now this also all has you know, economic impact. And the numbers that we're sharing with you today are from 2016. Illinois welcomed 110 million domestic visitors to the state. And believe it or not, only 17% of those come to Illinois for business. The other 83% come for leisure. And that was actually up about a million from the previous year. So now on to what Geneva does, or the Chamber does, to actually advertise throughout the year, not only at festival time. As I mentioned, we do print, radio, a lot of digital, and television as well. Some of our Chamber members asked me to bring to you some, th um, some, some testimonials of what they've experienced through the help from the Gene Geneva Chamber of Commerce. So I just want to share a few of their, their comments. One is from Christina Lambert. She's the owner of Circa, a small business right on, um, right on 3rd Street near the History Center. She says, quite simply, the chamber advertising that brings 250,000 people to, to attend Swedish Days is a golden opportunity for merchants to put on their best front and center for existing customers and new visitors. I personally use the opportunity to invite all of the Circa guests to attend our future festivals, especially the Christmas walk. And then customers return for the holidays. So Swedish Day advertising actually translates to holiday sales for my shop. The Chamber Festivals and advertising bring the people to town and I'm very happy to welcome them to town. So she's really talking about the fact that thousands and thousands of people are coming for Swedish Days and she's inviting them to come back, and she sees those sales impacting her store many, many months later. So we know that the longevity um, really helps. Martha Sanchez from State Street Jewelers says, there is no better value than the advertising the Chamber provides for our business. We could not duplicate the variety of the marketing they do for anywhere near the price. As a small business owner, as small business owners, we are supporting all of these people who don't have those large budgets providing a very good mix of marketing uh, vehicles as well as consistency throughout the year. Pat Falcone, who you may know from uh, Joseph's Meat and Deli, I have used many of the chamber services to grow my business. To name a few, selling sandwiches during Swedish days, a booth for over 20 years at the Festival of the Vine, and the gift certificate program. These, these benefits and all the advertising the chamber does helps bring people to my store that didn't know I was here, both during festivals and throughout the year. And he really talks about that well-rounded, all year round marketing that we provide to help support his business. Eric Ott, who is a small business owner right on State Street, Geneva Running Outfitters says, when there's a large festival with thousands of people coming to town, it allows us to be creative to get customers in the store and take advantage of that opportunity. We always look forward to them, and we can showcase our store to those who have never been here, been to see us. So he's talking about loving that many people coming to town and taking the responsibility of getting those people with, into his store. But we're driving those people to town to help those small stores. And last of all, I was asked to share a uh, interesting quote from a uh, reporter here from the Daily Herald and he titled it, Some Big Numbers. I don't know if you saw this, but it's really interesting. Did last weekend Christmas walk in Geneva represent the greatest number of people in one place at the same time in the history of the Tri-Cities? The streets of Geneva were incredibly crowded last weekend, with the proof being in where cars were parked. Granted, some of this was for the Christmas house tour, but it counts as a part of the whole hoopla. The auxiliary, auxiliary train station parking and the Geneva Government Center grounds parking were all full and cars were parked as far away as Sunset Park Pool. And all the places in between in all directions from the major, major gathering places on State and Third Streets. I'm not really good at predicting crowd sizes, but let's call it this, mammoth and quite likely unprecedented. 
If you were downtown during that time, you would have experienced the same thing. So here are a few samples of some of the advertisements that uh, we've put together through the year. Some of them are festival related. Many of them are not festival related, just to keep the, keep the word out there. Um, hopefully you've seen some of these in print, but again, these are used in digital formats as well. And some of the themes are used in radio as well as television. These are the non-festival ones, uh, dining on the nines during uh, restaurant week at the beginning of January, which is in support of sort of that lull, cold time that restaurants can often struggle. We help to, to really push that and support their efforts. And um, close to home, far from ordinary. Obviously, we're really unique. And the last few, um, bring your buds. Springtime, we're inviting people to grab, grab their friends and family and come to Geneva. And at Christmas time, we used uh, no two stores are alike, again, pounding away at the uniqueness that Geneva provides for visitors. Uh, the statistics that we have talk about visitors spending. If they're spending the night, on average, it's about $183. If they're just here for the day, they're spending about $75. So if you just use that calculation of $75 a day, and you take all these kernels of popcorn, 440000 times the $75, $3,300,000 driven into town. So I ask you to grab your popcorn if you want, sit back, and we're going to take a look at some of the videos. They actually, the, these are some of the stations that this commercial, it's actually not a movie, um, but these are some of the stations that we're actually running these commercials or these, these little blurbs on. The first one is... Swedish days. You may not have heard this one or seen it. I hope there's sound. How sweet it is. Come fest at one of the best of the West. Swedish Days, Geneva, Illinois Midsummer Festival, June 19th to the 24th. Friends and family will enjoy fabulous food, carnival rides, activities for kids, free entertainment each night on our central stage, the grand parade, games, and more. And don't forget to visit Sweden Vost, our tent that's everything Swedish. Summer fun doesn't get any sweeter than this. For more information about the festival or Geneva, Illinois, visit us online at GenevaChamber.com. Watch for that one coming up soon. And the next one is from uh, Festival of the Vine last year in September. Or this year, excuse me, this year. Savor the flavor of Geneva during Festival of the Vine, our autumn harvest celebration of food and wine. Join us September 7th to the 9th at 4th and State Streets. Geneva's fine restaurants will be showcased under one huge tent at the Flavor Fair, along with a variety of wine for purchase and musical entertainment. Also enjoy the arts and crafts show, face painting for kids, complimentary trolley and horse-drawn carriage rides, a flower market, great shopping in Geneva's historic downtown, and more. For details, visit GenevaChamber.com. So in closing, before I pass it on to another colleague, um, these 440,000 people who are driven into Geneva this doesn't happen by chance. The, chamber, the Geneva Chamber is advertising and is really driving this popcorn truck. Um, now I'm going to invite Mike Simon, who would like to add some additional comments tonight. Thank you, Susan. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Mr. Simon. Thank you, sir. Whether you're in retail or not, you're all aware of the impact that Amazon has had on the landscape. Um, Everybody's impacted, and we all see what's happening in the big box and department store industry with Carson's, Sears, Toys R Us, Macy's, Kmart, more recently Sam's Club. Basically, if you're trying to sell any kind of a commodity that can be purchased for less money someplace, there's no reason for a person to come into a store. They're going to get it online. So in order to survive and thrive, businesses might, must not only offer unique goods and services, they must have theater, drama, and fun as part of their business models. People need a reason to come to a store, or in our case, a town. Something needs to make it unique and put it in the consciousness of the customer. I say, only partially joking, that the little traveler, at the little traveler, we're not in the retail business, we're in show business. The chamber, in partnership with the city, does an amazing job of providing that uniqueness by putting on festivals and advertising that are fun, memorable, and unique. And I hear from all, all stores all over the country, how does your town do it? We belong to a co-op of stores. It's about 125 of us all over the country. Um, they're all independent stores. 
Some are in strip centers, some are in malls, some are in downtowns. And if you've ever been on vacation, you go on to, into a store and said, boy, this is nice. This reminds me a little bit of The Little Traveler. Chances are it's one of my friends. We share our business models. We share our sales figures. We share merchandising ideas. And um, we share advice. Um, I want to read you what was on the message board the day after Mother's Day this year, because Mother's Day is a big deal in our business. This first one is from a store in Atlanta. Well, I'll start the ball rolling with my sad news and then hope the rest of you have better news than I do. We were down 23% for the week of Mother's Day. The big problem is traffic was down 26.1%. My average sale was up 5%. My items transaction were up 4%. We just had 745 less customers this year than the week for the week uh, last year. So I'm wondering, how are others doing with their traffic counts? Last year, we started a slow slide, and this year, it's really picking up steam. This is a store in upstate New York. Mother's Day was down 12%. Retail on the whole is down in our area. Our paper reports on the sales tax collected each month, and it's been down every month this year. The store in Arkansas. Our big store was down 7.4% in sales, a victory in our minds, and down 393 transactions. Our mall store was down 29% in sales and down 640 transactions. A store in Illinois. Our Mother's Day weekend business was about the same as last year, which right now seems to be a good thing. Our traffic pattern all, se pattern all season has been sporadic. Crummy January and February, down 30%. Great March up 20%, crummy April down 10%, and running even May so far. Store in Indiana. For the week of Mother's Day, our big store was up 7%, with units sold down 28%. Our small store was down 19.2%, and units sold were down 868 units. Uh, store in Nashville, Tennessee. Thanks for posting your results. Our business was also discouraging. Large store down 19.5%, smaller store down 1.2%. Uh, transactions down 17% alone. My large store was down over 300 transactions. Another store in Illinois. We had our biggest event for our town on May 4th. This is our 13th year and our 12th year, my 12th year to ch chair our girls' night out. Those that came out had a ball, and PR from our retail association was over the top. The after party was amazing. Shopping traffic was way down. We were down 30% in sales, and many of my retail friends stated the same thing. This is the worst it's been since 1992, and we have an extremely thriving downtown shopping district. And finally, a store in California. For the week of Mother's Day, we're down 4% in dollars, 8% in transactions, 4.8% um, year to date. Every year, we see about a 7% decline in overall transactions and work hard to compensate for it by increasing every transaction and average dollar sold. We're in a lot of malls, and they're, been the, they're the first to have seen declines. Now the open-air centers are being heavily impacted. So this is the news from all over the country, and it's very, very different than what you're hearing in Geneva. And the reason it's different than what you're hearing in Geneva is because of the partnership between the Chamber and the City of Geneva. So on behalf of all of us, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Colonel Lieben, please. Uh, Susan Hahn is here. Mr. Lieben, I can trouble you to go to the microphone. Mr. Lieben, all these. They want to stand in front of them. There. How's that? You notice I called Colonel Lieben? I noticed. I didn't respond. <laughs> Did you notice? <laughs> Susan Hong, Mike Simon is here. Uh, Mark Spiro. Uh, you stand up if you would. Gordy Hard, Bruce Heidloff, Tim Riley, Jim Emma. These are some of our uh, 16 board members, and the staff is Gene Gaines, Judy Carroll, Nancy Jensen, Laura Rush, and Gene Sautel. So uh, they all work with, uh, they all do this because we all have a passion for Geneva. Nobody gets paid to do this. It's a lot of hours, but we know that we appreciate your partnership with us, too. This can't be done by any one group, but it is effective. It has worked, and we've got challenges looking forward to what the next five years is going to be in a business community. We have to rethink everything we're doing on a regular basis and try and keep alive and active for this town. But there is no greater town to experiment in Geneva, and uh, we appreciate all you do for us, too. So it's all a joint effort. And above all, everything we've done tonight, 
one thing we do have in Geneva with the aldermen and with getting together is we do have fun, and it's a great place to live for our kids and our families. So thank you very much. I'd be remiss if I didn't invite the council members to either ask a question of or a comment for our friends of the chamber, if anyone would like to. Alderman Bruno. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for the chamber just for the theater tonight. It was uh, uh, unique in my experience and, uh, and, and well done. Um, but uh, I, I would just echo what everyone else said, the, the combination of uh, the, the city, the partnership with city, the uh, chamber, the, the merchants, and, uh, and the environment we've created downtown. Uh, it's a historic district is, uh, I think, uh, the envy of every community. Uh, so thank you again. Anyone else in the dais? Mr. Lieben, thank you. Ms. Gaines, members of the board, members of the chamber, thank you very much. Uh, it should be noted in the interest of full disclosure, our cleaning contract will not cover this, <laughs> so that bill will be charged accordingly. We brought Allied Waste here tonight for you. Just <laughs> <laughs> I could have just had it. Just, would you like us to get that out here real quickly for you so we can do that right now? Two seconds. <laughs> well, since it's not edible, my gosh. It's like <laughs> Chamber members, can we just get it out on the porch? We'll now pop over to the rest of the agenda. How's that? <laughs> Corny, but okay. Thank you for the. Uh... <laughs> wow. Item 3D, ladies and gentlemen, is to consider the mayor's reappointments to the city boards and commissions. A document is available on your dais. A document is also available online in the city council's packet. We can uh, approve these appointments in one fold swoop if someone wishes to make that motion. Motion by Alderman Maladra. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Ruby. Any questions or comments regarding the appointments and reappointments? Hearing none, seeing none, roll call Mr. Clerk. Mike Bruno. Aye. Tara Burkhardt. Aye. Don Cummings. Aye. Becky Ruby. Aye. Craig Belladra. Aye. Gene McGowan. Aye. Drew Medecki. Aye. Robert Swanson. Aye. Item 3D passes with nine affirmative votes, excuse me, eight affirmative votes, no absences, Excuse me, no nays, two absences. Forgive me. Item four, amendments to the agenda. Are there any amendments this evening from anyone at the dais? Item five is the omnibus agenda. All items marked with an asterisk are considered to be routine by this council and can be considered and acted upon with one motion. Is there such a motion? So moved. Motion by Alderman Bruno. Second. Seconded by Alderman Swanson. Any questions or comments regarding the omnibus agenda? Hearing none. Seeing none, Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Mike Bruno. Aye. Tara Burkhart. Aye. Don Cummings. Aye. Becky Ruby. Aye. Craig Maladra. Aye. Jim Mc Jean McGowan. Aye. Jim Rudecki. Aye. Robert Swanson. Aye. Item five, the omnibus agenda, passes <coughs> eight affirmative votes, no nay votes, and two absent. We skip down to item number 10, <coughs> municipal bills for payment. <coughs> And we kindly ask our city clerk to read the bills in their aggregate for our consideration. Total bills for payment, $3,131,583.89. Uh, Mayor, I move we approve and pay the bills as read. The individual items that add, that add up to that amount could be found in tonight's packet on the city website. Alderman Bruno makes the motion to pay the bills as presented. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Ruby. Any questions or comments regarding the bills as presented? which are also available on the website and in our packets. <coughs> Hearing none, seeing none, Mr. Clark, please take the roll. Mike Bruno. Aye. Tara Burkhardt. Aye. Don Cummings. Aye. Becky Ruby. Aye. Craig Maladra. Aye. Gene McGowan. Aye. Jim Radecki. Aye. Robert Swanson. Aye. Eight affirmative votes, zero nay votes, two absent. The motion passes. Item 11, Committee of the Whole Items of Business. Item 11A is to consider approval of resolution number 2018-36, accepting a proposal to conduct solid waste services contract from July 1, 2018 through June 30th, 2023 with Lakeshore Recycling Systems as presented. So moved. Motion by Alderman Bruno. 
Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Alderman Maladra. Prior to questions or comments from the dais, I would like to turn the floor over to our city attorney, Mr. Sandak. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sandak is going to refer to a document that was forwarded to the council earlier today. This document will provide, I think for lack of a better word, the ramparts in which we had the opportunity to discuss this item this evening. So, Mr. Sandak. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as all know, or should have received from the city administrator, due to questions that came from council with respect to the process uh, as to where we are this evening and coming off of the last Committee of the Whole, uh, my firm, as well as Mr. Radovich, were asked to opine with respect to what's properly before you and what the council may do and what it may not do, at least for purposes of this evening. So as a little bit of a reminder, uh, the city staff went through a process to procure the best response of lowest bidder from professional uh, waste haul disposers and, I, and obtained a number of uh, bids and opened them in the ordinary course of its business and did so properly. And then staff then received some comments from the dais, including a couple aldermen, and then received a letter from Advance, the incumbent provider, which offered to amend its bid. First, in our opinion, this includes Mr. Finson, Mr. Radovich, and myself. Staff did everything properly according to city code and state law. Second, um, the questions asked by council and staff of the winning the potential winning bidder, the lowest response bidder, did not change its bid in any way, shape, or form. When the incumbent wrote its letter on uh, May 17 and offered to change its bid, that is after the bids have been opened, that bid, that bid amendment may not be, at this time, voted upon. It is outside the parameters and outside the scope of the, of the City of Geneva's ordinance and the state law. All you can do this evening is accept the winning lowest bidder or an alternate bid that's been advanced. Nothing that hasn't been properly advanced. Kind of in the confines of the rules of engagement. Anything done outside the rules of engagement may not be properly entertained, at least at this time. I'm happy to answer any questions if any, anyone has any. Questions for City Attorney Sandak from the dais. Alderman McGowan. Thank you, Mayor Burns. Um, Attorney Sandek, we, we've read the revised proposal that advanced disposal sent. I can't erase that from my brain, even though it's, you've explained that it's not um, legal to take that proposal into consideration. So does it mean that um, I guess I don't. I don't know how to um, proceed. You're right. I know. I can't unknow what I know. You can't unring the bell, Alderman. I totally agree with that proposition. However, this letter, dated May 17, may not properly be bought today. So you can accept the bid as staff has put forward or not, but you can't accept the changed bid that occurred after the bids were opened and after the timing to uh, accept bids from advance. So this is not properly before this body and cannot be voted on without, frankly, tainting the entire process. Does that answer your question, Alderman? It does. Um Yes, it does answer my question. Um, and I guess my other question is, if this council voted to accept the original proposal from advanced disposal, um, would, would they then, would advanced disposal then be able to go with the um, prices in the revised proposal anyway. So that's two questions. First, your first question is, could you accept something that isn't the lowest responsible bidder? Your ordinance says at 1.842 formal contract procedures that this body shall purchase from the lowest responsible bidder. So if you deem advances bid that was 
procured at the time of bidding to be the lowest responsible bidder, those were the terms upon which you would contract. If you, so the idea is it's one or the other right now. That's it. So you would be essentially accepting something other than what was not before you because it's not before you. But then what is the point of the city staff bringing the lowest responsible proposal to the council for decision making if we're obligated to accept that lowest responsible proposal in the first place? Because it's made of more than just the price. So for instance, the city code talks about experience, professional um, endeavors, character references, performance, and some less than totally objective concepts that may be best described as what you believe in total in the aggregate makes the lowest responsible bidder the lowest responsible awardee. So yes, price is a, a driver and some think it's the most important driver. That's for each of you to determine via your set of judgment, but it's more than just price. It, again, it's the aggregate of the bid. Right, it's qualitative and quantitative. Yes. So I just wanted to clarify because it sounded like you were saying that we were obligated to go with the lowest of the lowest. You're obligated to, you, you are obligated proposal. per the code to accept the lowest responsible bidder. That's what your obligation is. Okay, but it's up. But it's up to us to determine who we feel is the most responsible. Yes. Lowest and responsible. And it's the or lowest responsible, responsible bidder. Okay. All of the characteristics of what, of what we just discussed make up that term. How you choose to prioritize the various components is in your sound discretion. Okay, that's a good clarification for me. Thank you. Anyone else on the dais? Alderman Cummings? I wasn't at the meeting last week, but I did watch the tape, and this was, this was a difficult decision for me because I realized that we don't, we don't need to take the lowest bid, uh, that we can take things into account like um, relationship, uh, history, that sort of thing. But how do, how do we judge that? How much weight do we give it? If, if someone new is zero dollars and someone we have a relation, relationship with is a million dollars, you know, is a relationship worth a million dollars? No. So a relationship is worth something. It's not worth nothing. But I found the, the prices different enough and I I found our direction as a council consistently and constantly to staff to watch our dollars, to watch the budget, to continue with good service at the same or better price. And then I watched uh, Director Babica get up and sort of go out on a limb and say, I think we should go with someone new. It's a major change for the department. It's not easy. The easiest thing to do, probably from a workload standpoint, would have been to just continue on as is. But he went out on a limb. I don't think it was only because of the lower price. Um, I believe that the staff is following our direction on this, and I, I believe in their recommendation. And so I'm in favor of making that change. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Alderman Malagra. Um, I agree with Alderman Cummings. This, this is not easy. Actually, last week I came in thinking, finally, we have an easy one. It's a garbage contract. How hard can it be? And it ends up being really complicated and difficult, as are most things we have to deal with. Uh, to me, this is, I think the first thing to be clear about is this. This is not a vote 
of confidence in advanced. I have no issues with advanced. The service they've provided over the past five years has been good. The same was true for your predecessor for longer than five years. We looked at your proposal five years ago, the proposal from a qualified bidder with whom we had no experience, and compared it to the proposal from a qualified bidder with whom we had lengthy experience, none of it bad, and we made the decision that it was for, in the best interest of the community to switch to you guys. Um, we sacrificed a long-term business relationship because a better proposal came in, and that is business. Um, that's what it comes down to. All other things being equal, we haven't, it, it's, it's our responsibility after seeking bids and verifying qualifications to go with the better proposal. Um, is there a risk? Of course there's a risk. There was a risk in choosing you over the other guys. Um, nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody can say for sure. But what we can do is we can check qualifications. Uh, we do not have experience with Lakeshore, but we have colleagues in other towns who do. Uh, the references are good. The references are solid. I believe that Lakeshore is a qualified, uh, responsible bidder. Um, and that's the same risk that we had to face when we went with you. You were the unknown at that time. So we face a decision now. There's an element of the unknown in everything we do. So here we are with two bids. One company is known, one company is not. Uh, one, one company is known by us to be qualified. The other is not known by us directly, but by colleagues in other towns to be qualified. Both offered their proposals um, to our request. Both offered those proposals in good faith. That good faith being that Geneva would choose the lowest responsible bidder. Um, we have a process, a process by which we attempt to determine qualified bidder or not. Uh, that process was followed. Staff did, that, did its homework and research. Um, so in the end, I think it becomes almost irresponsible of us to um, deviate from that process, which really exists to ensure that the council removes the emotion and the politics from the situation and focuses on the facts of the matter. And the facts of the matter are uh, we have two proposals from two qualified firms. One is better than the other. Um, so I am going to support uh, staff's recommendation as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Alderman Bruno. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I would have to echo, uh, I think, every word of uh, what uh, Alderman Maladra said. Um, the, uh, I would qualify it as being wholly better uh, than advances. There, there are some things I really liked about the advances proposal, um, particularly with downtown. Uh, but we come back to the responsible bidder. I was thinking that was my out, and I simply can't. I can't make an argument that Lakeshore isn't responsible. Uh, we've talked to other communities. Um, they get glowing reviews. Um, there's some unknowns. As, as Alderman Maladra said, we went through the same transition with all the same concerns once before. Uh, but I would finish up with one uh, uh, point of order. This is advanced as a motion to accept Lakeshore. So a nay on this is not uh, an acceptance of uh, allies. That is correct. So how would that play out in turn? Would we have to make another motion? Uh, that's going to be explained when the council um, okay. has wrapped up their commentary. I'm going to turn to Attorney Sandak to explain, most importantly, the vote this evening and the parameters surrounding that vote 
per our statute and Illinois statute. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Anyone else on the dais? Nobody objects. I'll recognize Alderman McGowan for a second time. Alderman McGowan. Thank you. Um, I've received many phone calls and emails regarding this issue, as I'm sure everyone else on this council has in the last few weeks. Um, the majority, the vast majority of feedback I have received from residents in my ward and some outside of my ward um, uh, has all um, been very positive in favor of the city um, staying with advanced disposal for the next five years. Um, everyone has been extremely pleased with the services they've received. Um, I've gotten very specific stories on how wonderful <coughs> advanced disposal has been and how they've stepped it up and how they've um, worked really hard um, and like exceeded uh, standards. So um, that really says a lot to me. Um, and um, I did meet with Director Babica just to clarify a few things. Um, and it goes without saying that switching providers is a hassle for um, the residents and for public works staff. Not that they're up to the, not up to the task. They certainly can handle a change in providers as the city changed five years ago. But um, I think that, uh, and also, um, I think that of all the city staff that I've spoken to, um, everyone has been very pleased with the services we've received um, community-wide from advanced disposal. So we're not, the message I, I got is that we're not trying to get away from advanced disposal because we're not happy with them. We are happy with them. Um, and Lakeshore seems to be a good company too. We all don't know them very well at all, but I think because of all the feedback I've received from the residents in my ward um, asking me to please stay with advanced disposal, um, I I do want to vote in favor of not accepting the Lakeshore proposal. So, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the dais? I have been instru not instructed, but I have been advised uh, by council that commentary from the dais, questions from the dais, while certainly appropriate since this is a big issue. Commentary and questions from those in attendance is not as salient unless there is something material and materially different from last week's comments. So it is my recommendation to the council, without objection, that we ask our city attorney, Mr. Sandak, to explain the vote that's necessary this evening, and then we cast our votes. If that's the case, then I'll, I'll want to speak. And so are we saying we can't, we don't get to hear from the audience at all tonight? We, we have, I'm going to be leaning heavily on Attorney Sandak to make certain that the commentary provided tonight are, is consistent with the parameters established with regard to our decision-making authority. Um, I, I know that's not an un, a very unpopular thing to say, um, but I, I do believe it's in the best interest of the integrity of the process so as not to slip back perhaps, or risk jeopardizing the entire process. But Alderman Burkhart, the floor is yours. So, yeah, this is a really tough vote for me tonight, which I, again, like Alderman Mulatter, I would not have expected. I was telling people at my work, like, oh, yeah, I'm ready for three hours of debate on garbage. But, uh, but yet it's not surprising, right? Because all of us produce garbage every single day. We put our garbage out every single week. At Christmas, we stress about are we going to fit the garbage in the tote? Are we going to, how much do we keep back? I mean, in our alley, we have a text chain where we tell our, you know, we have families and Christmas is a big deal. Hey, there's room in my recycling bin. Bring your stuff over. Um, I hate to be stereotypical, but wives arguing with their husbands about taking out the garbage. Like, garbage is emotional. And, um, uh, 
boy, the, you know, I've heard from probably a dozen to 15 people by email or phone in the last week, and then a lot of people talking about it. Um, I have had a few, probably three people say, you know, go with the lowest bidder if I can save a dollar, a, you know, a week or two on a sticker, I'm, I'm good for it. Um, I've, I figured out, you know, uh, Director Babica gave us a great figure on that, that million dollars of savings. Um, I, I don't want to, we don't need to dive into it again, but I do wonder if that's compared to what we're paying now or what the advanced disposals bid for the next five years would be if that's still a million dollar savings. But for my family, it's $60 savings a year. So we get the totes. We love the tote because we know we have room for it. Sometimes the tote's full, sometimes the tote's half full, but it's just stress-free. It's there, you know, don't have to worry about getting the stickers. So $60 a year. You know, for me, I'm willing to pay that $60 for the consistency of advanced disposal, the fact that when they, you know, miss the bin or I don't get the bin out in time, I've called them, my neighbors called them, they come back around. Um, talking to several seniors today who said they're on fixed income but, but raved about the service they've gotten from advanced disposal. Um, a man who's grown up on First Street, grow, lives in the house his grandparents built, actually said, I've lived here 69 years. He says they're one of the best garbage collectors I've ever had talks about how friendly are they are, how they make sure to go the extra mile to help him so he doesn't have to, you know, things that, big bulky things he's had trouble with, how they um, helped him find the right way to get rid of his batteries. Um, so I, I've heard those stories again and again. And so I asked, the, again, the seniors, especially on fixed incomes, we talked through it. Okay, how many stickers do you use a month? And okay, here's your savings, you know, each one of them have said, stay with advanced disposal. They want to stay with advanced disposal. Lakeshore Recycling might do a great job and probably will. I mean, you know, I, but I don't know that. I, I know what advanced disposal has done for us for five years. So for me that, um, when we talk about responsible binner, I really appreciate the city attorney laying out to us that it is more than just price. And for me, it's relationships, it's quality, it's consistency, it's reliability. Um, it's being active in the community, um, and that's why I'll be voting the way uh, I'll be voting uh, tonight. I'm also, I don't think we talked a lot about the difference in the downtown pricing. I mean, again, what we're voting on, what we're talking about with the stickers and the totes is, is a pass-through, and we're making a decision for our residents. Um, do we want to save them five, ten dollars a month? And that's, again, means a lot to some people say hey yeah if you can save me five bucks a month and then, then please do I want you to go with the lowest bidder but um, there's an increase quite an increased cost for the city um, on the downtown garbage collection uh, through Lakeshore recycling um, really didn't include the big belly compactors and and that all goes back to the taxpayers the taxpayers end up paying the downtown garbage collection so um, anyway that's uh, that's where I am thanks Anyone else from the dais? <clears throat> Sir, uh, with, with uh, your indulgence that I keep a tight rein on this, okay? Welcome. Good evening. My name is Bob Fister. For the record, I'm the Municipal Marketing Manager for Advanced Disposal. Um, I heard what you had said, Mayor, that you don't want anything talked about that we talked about before. So um, I do have a question that's been brought up today um, that I think is material. Um, first of all, I have a copy of the front page of what is a request for proposals. Um, it's not a bid in our mind. Uh, it's a request for proposal. And if I could read on page four, the second paragraph, it says, The City of Geneva, Batavia, and St. Charles reserve the right to reject any and all proposals and to waive any informalities in proposals and to accept the proposal deemed most advantageous to them. Okay. I just want to put that on the record. Yes, sir. Um, and I've said everything I could possibly say last week, so I'll stop. I would ask if I could just address the council after the vote, if you would allow me to do that. Thank you. Without objection from the council, I'd like to turn uh, that particular question over to our city attorney, Mr. Sandek. Uh, and I, I would advise, or excuse me, I would share with the council that this, this very topic was discussed at length in a lengthy meeting this morning with legal counsel, city administrator, 
uh, and the Director of Public Works, Mr. Babica. So I, I'm, I'm glad for the question, and I'd like Mr. Sandak to address it. So for purposes of good process, um, the record should be contained. We, we, right now, a motion's on the floor. It's been seconded. And in the absence of additional council comments, um, that's the record that should be adduced and voted upon. So I would not recommend post-vote commentary, as that, I think, is frankly outside the scope of good process, not something ordinarily undertaken. Um, I would also remind everyone um, this will require six affirmative votes. That includes the mayor if the mayor chooses to vote. In the absence of a six vote um, being attained, the matter will not pass. And then we will deal with whatever motions come after that, if any. Mr. Sandak, will you kindly address the uh, topic that was brought up by Mr. Fister regarding what, I, what appears to be some confusion with respect to bids slash proposals slash? The Illinois state statute is pretty clear. They are bids, and even if we call something a proposal, we open them as bids. All matters were mailed out. Our entire code was adhered to pursuant to city code and state law. Process was followed by staff, um, frankly, to a T, and the pro which is why it is so important that once all bids were open, all bids were accepted and then closed, we have an even playing field for staff to measure these bids and then bring them to council for final resolution. So whether the words used proposal or bid in this instance is a distinction that makes no difference. City code and state law has been adhered to properly. From the dais. Alderman Burghardt. Just one thing, just what happens when I don't start with notes. Um, I wanna thank Public Works for their work on this. Uh, this is obviously something that took a lot of time and a lot of effort, and we got three uh, bids from three quality companies. You did exactly what we've asked, which was to go out and do cooperative bidding with our neighbors in St. Charles and Batavia. We want to see more of that. Um, uh, again, this is a hard vote for me tonight, but I do appreciate uh, the work uh, and responsibility and effort that went into it. So thank you. Thank you. Alderman Ruby. Um, just a quick point of clarification. The um, downtown collections were mentioned. That's not what we're voting on, though. That's part of the alternate <laughs> contract. That's not included in what we're voting on, correct? Mr. Babka, do you want to provide clarification? A simple yes would suffice, unless you want to provide any additional items. To The downtown collection that's being referenced is the Saturday optional collection. The specifications for Monday, Wednesday, Friday are built into the standard specifications. Okay. Thank you. So in short, it's an add-on. Correct. That is optional. Not optional add-on that can still be negotiated with whomever is awarded the contract. As budgetary resources allow. Budgetary resources allow, exactly. Okay. The floor is still yours, Alderman Ruby. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we are prepared for a vote. Without objection, I direct our city clerk to please take the roll call. <clears throat> Mike Bruno. Aye. Tara Burkhardt. Nay. Don Cummings. Aye. Becky Ruby. Aye. Craig Maladra. Aye. Jean McGowan. Nay. Jim Radecki. Aye. Robert Swanson. Aye. Mr. Clerk, would you kindly read the tally? Uh, six yay, two nay. And two, six uh, affirmative yes. votes, two nay votes, two absent. This matter passes. Staff is directed to work with our friends at Lakeshore Recycling Services. We now skip down to item number 13, new business or public comment prior to a closed session. Anything, folks? I will entertain a, I will entertain a motion, therefore, to close session on a collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or their representatives pursuant to five Illinois compiled statutes, 320-2, 320-3, 320-4, 320-5, 320-6, 320-7, 320-8, 320-9, 320-10, 320-11, 320-12, 320-13, 320-14, 320-15, 320-16, 320-17, 320-18, 320-19
Section C, Section 2 of the Illinois Open Meetings Act, 5 Illinois Compiled Statutes 220. Motion. Motion by McGowan. Seconded by? Second. Seconded by Alderman Bruno. A voice vote is sufficient to go into closed session. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? We'll be back shortly, ladies and gentlemen. There is no action being taken this evening, as I understand it, correct? That is correct. That is correct. Thank you. Thank you.